Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Assembly Lines Podcast. I'm Chris Torrance. So last time, if you recall, we took a look at Mike McGinnis's Rev Zero Apple II and tried to diagnose what was wrong with it. And this time, I'm going to continue my explorations of the Apple II, and I'll show how to hook up an Arduino to the Apple II so that we can dump out what the assembler code is doing as the Apple II starts up and see if that helps us trace the problem. So let's get started. Here's my prototyping card for debugging the Rev Zero Apple II. And what I've done is I've taken this prototyping card here which plugs into the Apple II and I'm feeding out the address lines A0 through A15 into the Arduino. And I'm feeding them into digital lines D2 through D13 and A0 through A3. I'm actually using Roger Wagner's Hyperduino Shield just to make it easier to unplug the Arduino and program it. Uh, but you certainly could have just plugged these wires straight into the Arduino itself. And then finally, the most important line is probably the reset one. So you can see here on the prototyping board, I've got the brown wire here plugged into reset, and then that is going to pin A4 on the Arduino. And so in my code, what I do is I just wait for A4 to go low, and that's how I know to begin recording the addresses that are coming out of the prototyping card. Let's take a look at my Arduino code. So originally what I tried to do is actually hook this up to an LCD and print out the addresses on LCD, but the trouble was it just wasn't fast enough to keep up with the 6502. So instead I switched to just using the serial output on the Arduino and I'm just dumping the addresses straight to my Mac. So you can see here's the program, I'm setting up my serial connection and then pin A4 which I have attached to the reset line in Apple II, I'm just telling that to be an input pull up so that it's high means off and low means on. And then all I'm doing is I'm just doing this very tight loop where the first thing I do is I wait for the reset line or pin A4 to go low and then I immediately record the first 700 addresses that I see on the address line. And what I'm doing here in the Arduino code is I'm actually using direct register access for the digital and the analog pins because this is so much faster than just doing a digital read. And I'm just anding and oring all of these addresses together to get my final 6502 address. And then once I've recorded 700 of them, I just dump them out to the serial console. And the only reason I picked 700 is because that's the amount of memory that I could fit into the Arduino without maxing it out. All right, now we've got the prototyping card plugged into the Apple II. Here's my Arduino plugged into my laptop. I've got the serial monitor up on the screen so I can see when it starts dumping out addresses. Now, I'm not keeping track of the clock signals coming from the Apple II. Normally, you would want to watch the phase one and phase zero clocks coming out of the Apple II and only read the address lines when it was valid but I found that the Arduino just wasn't fast enough to keep up with the clock in the 6502. So I'm just gonna do my best to have it read whenever it can, and then we'll have to figure out when the addresses are valid and when they're not valid. And this actually seems to work out okay, but you'll be able to see that in a minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn the power on. And now you can see the Apple II's on, and it's waiting for me to hit reset because this is a Rev Zero. As soon as I hit reset and let go, the Apple II is going to reset, but then the Arduino is also going to immediately start recording data because we're looking at the reset line. So let's go ahead and do that. And you can see that over here it dumped out all of the addresses. And if we scroll back to the top of this output, you can see here we go. So FFFD. That's the reset address for the 6502. Uh, it immediately, it's supposed to jump to FF59, which it did, but then our Arduino wasn't quite fast enough to catch that, so now it skipped to FF5A. Then it goes to FF5B, and you can see that there are some 
invalid addresses every now and then where we're probably reading the address line when it just has junk data on it. But in general, we're actually picking up good addresses. So we can now go through and trace this and see the boot sequence for the Apple II and make sure that everything looks good. So it's one thing to know that the addresses are all okay, but you'd also like to know that the data lines are producing good data. And so I did the same run a second time, but this time I plugged the ad, instead of plugging in address lines A8 through A15, I plugged those into the 6502's data lines, D0 through D7, and then just ran those through the Arduino and dumped those out as well. And then we could make sure that when we go through the code here that we're also getting good data on the data address lines. Here's the output from my Arduino program. So the first column is just the address that was read by the Arduino from the Apple II. This next column is the data that was on the data bus uh, at approximately the same time. I had to do that in two different runs, so it's not necessarily always gonna be in sync. And then I wrote a program to match up the line number with the actual monitor ROM listing so that you can see what's going on for each instruction. And as you can see, this actually looks like a normal boot sequence for an Apple II. So once I've hit the reset key, it jumps to the reset vector, then it goes down, it does some initialization, setting stuff up for the text window and for 40 columns. And then finally it just continues on uh, doing some initialization and then gets down to where it outputs the bell, uh, which it goes ahead and does because we hear it beep. And then as it does the bell, then it has to jump into a bunch of weights. And this is where we hit our 700 instruction limit from the Arduino, uh, just because the weight takes quite a while to actually ring the bell. So everything looks normal for this Apple II, at least up into the beep. So what I did next is I slightly modified my Arduino program to wait until it actually gets to the get key routine. And that's around FD0C. And so what I did is I just say, don't start recording addresses until after you reach get key. And then I just did the whole sequence again, booted up the Apple II, hit reset, and here's where things get a little bit more interesting. So if we look now at the annotated code, we can see that we're at read key, and the first thing it does is it jumps to key in, and then it does a bit to see is the key down. So is there a key held down? Uh, normally, with my other Apple II, when I do this, it'll just sit here and spin because it'll just keep going back to key in at the prompt. But instead, with Mike's Apple II, it actually thinks that a key is held down even though there actually isn't one being held down and then it just jumps into the output routine and then finally comes back and asks for another key. Again, it says it's down. So something strange is going on where the keyboard line is being held high indicating that there's a key or the clear keyboard strobe is not working so it doesn't actually clear the keyboard strobe. So my experiments with the Arduino and Mike's Rev Zero Apple II lead me to conclude that most of the board is actually working just fine. So it appears to be able to read the ROM memory and store things in RAM and it can go ahead and ring the bell, but it's still just getting stuck in that infinite loop of bell ringing and the screen flashing. And so I'm really not sure what's going on at this point. I tried some more with the oscilloscope, but I didn't have much luck trying to trace the signals. And so at this point, I think what I'm going to do is just pack it up and bring it to Kansas Fest and see if somebody there can actually help me diagnose what's going on. So stay tuned for a follow-up, and thanks for watching.